Hey you guys, Matthew here. Back with episode 5 of our of my Python learning program. Today we're going to be doing um the next part. We're about 25% through the program and should be only about 19 parts long. So it's called functions. We're doing functions today, you guys. You might have considered the situation when you have to would like to reuse a piece of code just like a few different values instead of rewriting the whole code it's much cleaner to define a function which can then be used repeatedly check out the code in the editor if you can believe the blah blah you'll remember going through and calculating tax and tip and one chunk of program here you can see we've defined two functions tax to calculate the tax of the bill and tip to compute the tip okay so this is just telling you what it is okay see how much of the code you understand at first glance we'll explain it all soon when you're ready click run to continue okay so um, this is one of those comments um, this is times and then equals so it's the bill times whatever equals this so it's you're multiplying this by the bill equals percentage this is the add-in that we're t we were talking about and then F is yeah percentage equals bill so percentage times I'm guessing this return bill so Okay. Function are divided three components: the header, comment, and body. Um, definition keyword. Okay, so the definition that's what like was the earlier any parameters the function requires. Here's an example. Definition hello world. There are no parameters. Um optional comment yeah that's what it tells you like it, what it's doing the body which describes the procedures the function carries out the body is indented just like conditional statements uh, print hello world okay here's the full body piece together instructions go on ahead and create a function spam that print prints the string eggs to the console. Don't forget to include a comment of your own choosing included in triple quotes. Okay. So I have a function starting in line five, so we're starting right here. You can leave the code on line ten alone for now. We'll explain it soon. Okay. Okay. So what we're doing is uh, definition of spam so def spam it's gonna be just like that hello world one. Oh my god typing misuse okay and then we're down one and then we're tab we're indenting it and then on um, triple quotes and then uh, prints um uh eggs i guess to the console those quotes are for the designers that come in behind you so it's probably best to do that always when you create a code and then print um Eggs, I guess. It's weird. Run. Oh, right. My bad. My bad, you guys. That was forget. I forgot. There we go. I remember that. I always remember that. Okay. Call and response. The previous spam is the last line told the program to look for the function called spam. Okay, that's what it's talking about when it's called. 
and execute the code inside it. We have a function square. Call it on the number 10 by putting 10 between the parentheses of square on line 10. Okay. So what do we do? Just copy and paste. I think so. Definition of square ten. Is this what they mean? Okay. Let's see if this works. Still doesn't work. Let me guess just print and paste, copy paste. Sorry guys, I got my uh wisdom teeth pulled out, so this is gonna sound weird. Then ten ten run. Okay, I'll just do the solution. Let's see what I did wrong. Oh, okay, we do, we do not that's how you okay. We don't put the definition. We just call square ten. Okay. They didn't exactly explain that to me correctly. Parameters and arguments. Let's take another look. At the definition of the function square from the previous exercise. Definition of square n. Here n is a parameter of square. Parameter is a variable that is input in the function. Okay, so this is this is just like a calculator. That's what they're describing it as. Arguments. Call in the previous example we called square 10. Here the function square was called with the parameter n set to the argument 10. Typically when you call a function you should pass in the same number of arguments as there are parameters. To summarize, when defining a function placeholder variables are called parameters. When using or calling a function inputs into the function are called arguments. Okay, so is it like this is the parameter and then this is the argument, I guess. Okay, yeah. Check out the function in the editor power. It should take two arguments, a base and an exponent, and raise the first to the power of the second. It's currently broken, however, because its parameters are missing. Replace the underscore s with the parameters base and exponent and then call power function with the base of 37 and exponent of 4. I'm guessing base one, two, three, exponent, then what is it, base? Oh wait. Is it like thirty seven and then four? 
Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay, so that was dealing with parameters and arguments. That's that's what got me. I almost put this down here again, but that's how you do it. We see functions that can print text or do simple arithmetic, but functions can be much more powerful than that. For example, a function that can call another function. Okay, so this is how they compact some things. They make it more complicated. Let's look at these two functions in the editor. One good turn, which adds one to the number, it takes in as an argument and deserves another, which adds two. Change the body, it deserves another, so it, it always adds two to the output of one good turn. So we're just doing this. One, return. It is one. Wait, wait. Let's see. Is this it? One good turn. Okay, let's go with this. And then plus, I think. And then in. And honestly, I would think it would be better if we just did. It wouldn't really matter because it's all pluses, but let's go with this, but. Okay. What? Isn't that what this did? Or is it, am I just missing something? Okay, let's go through this. Let's see if I'm just missing something. Run. Why would we multiply, isn't it? Plus? I guess it's always multiply. I'm, that's, I, I, I interpreted something wrong. I guess it's always multiplied here, you guys. I thought it was, since this one was multiplying right here, this one was supposed to be adding right here instead of multiplying, but that's good enough. Let's create a few more functions just for good measure. Uh, definition shout phrase. If phrase equals equals phrase dot upper, that will put them all uppercase return your shouting. Else return, can you speak up? Shout, I'm interested in shouting. Okay, that's an if true or false kind of thing. The example above is just to help you remember how functions are structured. Don't forget the colon at the end of your function definition. First, define a function called cube. Define cube this that takes an argument called number. that so don't forget the parentheses and the colon make the function return the cube of that number um, okay so return let's see return shouting turn i.e. the number multiply by itself and multiply itself once again define a function called by three if that number okay This is this is um 
This is the if statement for the second one. I was wondering if there was another if statement. So return cube of that number. Okay, so what was it? Number I guess number times number. That's cubed. Times number, my bad. If I get this wrong, I will just do a solution because that's what I can remember. That's how you do it. Define a solution by three. Okay. Define Oh wait. Uh by underscore three um parentheses um number at least I remember this guy this stuff you guys. Um if then statement if um, that number is divisible by three by three should call cube number and return it result okay uh, okay if um, I underscore three is equal to double equal um uh, uh wait number divided by three uh return return cube number as a result if not uh, tab again else let's see okay if phrase equals this so wait if number equal to a phrase to upper number divided by three if it is just visible okay I know I'm gonna get this wrong anyways else uh, what is it otherwise should return false okay return uh okay do i just label it as false or well i'm going to get it wrong anyways i can already tell right okay remember that There we go. Okay. Return cube number. What did I do wrong right there? I think it's string. Uh, cube number. Run. Well, that's wrong. Okay, so I got that right. 
Okay. I don't get how that works. Oh, okay. If there's no remainder, that's what it's asking for. If there's no remainder. Oh, okay, that's how you do it. Okay. I did that right, though. You know, it's criticizing me. Oh, and an extra indention. That's where I messed up. And I messed up on that one, too, so that's fine. I get what I got wrong. Square root 25 on line 3, okay. I know Kung Fu. Remember, import this from the first exercise in the course. That was an example of importing a module. A module is a file that contains definitions, including variables and functions that you can use once is in imported. Before we try any fancy importing, let's see what Python already knows about square roots. On line 3, an editor, editor asks Python to print square root of 25. Of 25. I'm guessing this uses the computer. Throws an error. Oh, so it's okay. There's no extra code behind this. That's why. Generic imports. Did you see that Python said name error name square root is not defined. Python doesn't know what square roots are yet. There is a Python module named math that includes a number of useful variables and functions, and square root is one of those functions. And in order to access access math, all you need is the import keyword. When you simply import a module this way, it's called a generic import. Okay. You'll need to do two things here. Type import math. We'll give me a minute to redo this. Just like on one of my first days. I'm guessing that wasn't supposed to. Okay, it was. Okay. Um, type import math on line 2 in the editor. Um, import math on line two in the editor. Insert math dot before math dot. Is it like that? Only to use import math, but use the square root function from within import math. Then hit run and see what Python now knows. Okay. Nice work. Now Python knows how to take the square root of a number. However, we only really need the square root function, and it can be frustrating to have to keep using math.squareRoot. It's possible to import only certain variables or functions from a given module, pulling in just a simple single function from a module is called a function import. And it's done with the from keyword, from module import function. Now you can s just type square root to get the square function of a number. No more math dot square root. Let's import only the square root from math this time. You don't need the this or after the square root in the from math import square root bit. Okay. From math import square root. Okay. That should be it. Yep. Great, we found a way we found a way to handpick the variables and functions we want from modules. What if we still want all the variables and functions in a module but don't want to have a const on to constantly type math? Universal import can handle this for you. The syntax for this is from module import times, I guess. 
Um, use the power of from import from module import this to import everything from math module on line three of the editor. So from math import aster. Run. Next. Universal imports may look great on the surface, but they're not a great idea for one imp very important reason. They fill your program with a ton of variable and function names without the safety of those names be still being associated with the modules they came from. If you have a function of your very own name, Scroot, and you import math, your function is safe. There is your Scroot and there is math.screwed. If you do from math import this, however, the problem is mainly two different functions with this exact same name. Even if your own definitions don't directly conflict with the names from important module, if you import this from several modules at once, you won't be able to figure out which variable or function came from where. For these reasons, it's best to stick with another import module and type module.name or just import specific variables and functions from various modules as needed. The code in the editor will show you everything available in the math function. Click to check it out. You'll see square root along with some other useful things like pi, factorial, and trigonomic functions. Okay. A lot of things I don't understand, like half the stuff that I don't even want to know right now, but I'm guessing that's a lot of useful stuff. Okay, now that you understand the functions are and how to import modules, let's look at some of the functions that are built in Python to into Python. No modules required. You already know about some of the built-in functions we use used with strings, such as upper, lower, string, and len length. These are great for doing work with strings, but what about something a little more analytic? Analytic. What do you think the code and the editor will do? Click run when you think you have an idea. Okay. I don't know what arg is. Okay, so that's the, like this is the absolute square root of like the with the uh the you know the two bars in math around a number, even if it's a negative, it'll be like negative five would turn to a five for this. Minimum would be the number minimal number, or well, maximum would be the maximum number. I think. Yep. I think that's what it did. Yep. The max function takes any number of arguments and returns the largest one. Okay. Largest can have odd definitions here, so it's best to use max on integers and floats where the results are straightforward and not only not on other objects like strings. For example, max one, two, three will return three, the largest number in the set of arguments. Try out the max function on line three of the editor. You can provide any number of integer or float arguments to max. Three max is blank. Wait a second. confused okay so let's just do this thing um four five six seven let's try this yay okay that's good minimum is the same thing go ahead and say minimum equal to the thing okay minimum uh, 40 
37, 36, negative 32, I did an equal to, that sucks, and then a 0, let's see, it should be negative 2, yep, absolute, 3 and negative 3, yeah, yeah, this is what we're, I told you about it, okay. Okay, so absolute of, what, was, what did they give us? Negative 42. Yep. The type of data it receives as an argument, if you ask Python to do the following, print type 42, print type equal to, print type span, type integer, type float, type string, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Have Python print out the type of integer, a float, and a string, string, in the editor. You can pick any val values of which to call type, so long as they produce one of each. Okay, so, type, let's just go with like 36. Let's do what they did. Uh, cool. Uh, okay, so there we go. That should finish it. Okay. Okay, let's review functions. Definition, speak message, return message if happy. Speak, I'm, I am happy. In between, else if, sad, speak, I'm sad, else speak, I don't know what I'm feeling. Again, the example code about ju is just there for your reference. First definition, a function, shut down, shut underscore down, that takes one argument, don't forget the parentheses on the col or the colon. Make sure just use an S. Okay, argument S. So it's S. I thought it was something else since I did it earlier like this. If shut down underscore down function receives an S equal to yes. It should return shutting down. Okay. Let me get fix this first. If S equals yes, tab return shutting down El else if that thing right there Okay, okay. It's equal to no is it L F S is equal to no return return uh shut down abort it. This, this seems like a really bad thing to happen. 
Anything other than these inputs and functions should return. Okay, else. Else. Return. Sorry. That should be it. Yep, I got it. Okay. 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 Review modules. Good work. Now let's see what you remember about importing modules, modules, and specifically what's available in the math module. Import the math module in whatever way you prefer. Call it square root function on the number this and print a value into the console. Okay. Import math function square root um, and then square root of one three three six eight nine. I probably let's just go with let's see what I forgot what it was I can't remember what it was oh okay so oh okay they just did it this way that's fine I can't I couldn't remember what the extra part was the right word perfect last but not least let's review the built-in functions you've learned about in a lesson Define is numeric, num numeral, return type numeral, equal equals, integer or type numeral, equal equal float, uh, max min, and this, absolute, absolute. First, define a function called what? Distance underscore from underscore zero. And what are we defining as? With one argument, choose any argument you like. Just put it as a. Okay. If the type of argument is either integer or this, if type a is equal to equal equal to. Uh, Either integer okay or float return absolute. Uh, a and then else return nope okay hope that works doesn't oh I, okay else that was a stupid mistake it's still wrong. Okay, that's they wanted us to just repeat that. Oh, okay.
okay, so it's type this or type. Oh, okay, yeah, the, remember the type stuff. Okay, I remember why it's like that. Okay. 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 Okay, that's it for today. Next time we're going to be working on um, taking a vacation, this next lesson. Day at school. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing next time. It's only going to be about seven slides. That should be fine. So, hope you guys are having a nice day and see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, it's Matthew here, and we're on our fourth video of the Python learning program that I'm doing. So, today we're going to be doing um, PYG Latin, which is the next section. Um, well, we learned so far. We're just uh, this is just a final thing. So we're building a Latin translator today. So break it down. Now let's take what we're le we've learned so far and write a pig Latin translator. I guess that's what it. Uh, yeah, okay, that's what it means. Pig Latin is a language game where you move the first letter of the word to the end and add a. So Python becomes. Python pay to write a pig Latin translator in Python here are the steps we'll need to take ask the user to input a word in English make sure the user entered a valid word convert the word from English to pig Latin display the translation result so that's what we're doing so ahoy or should I say ahoy oy, ahoy ahoy Let's warm up by printing a welcome message to our translator users. Please print the word pig Latin. Print pig. What part of this would be fun? Making this kind of game. This would be kind of weird. Welcome to Big Latin Translator. Start coding here. Okay. So, okay. Next, we need to ask for the user for an input. Name equals raw in underscore input. What's your name? Print name. Um, in the above example, raw input accepts a string, prints it, and then waits for the user to type something and press enter or return. In the interpreter, Python will ask, what's your name? Once you type in your name and hit enter, it will be stored in name. On line 4, use raw underscore input. this and then enter a word space to ask the user into word save the results as raw input a variable called original to return Okay, so what does it want us to do like original equals raw underscore input and then with these. Is that what it wants? Okay, get a hint. Oh, I get it. Original equals raw input. Run. That is still wrong. But it says call it original. So variable name? It, yeah, original. Am I am I spelling this wrong? That's what it said to do. 
Let's see what the solution is. Did I just do it on the wrong? I did it on the wrong line. That's stupid. Oh, that that is really, really ridiculous. Uh, enter a world word, so just pun. Let's just go with that. Next, we need to ensure that the user actually types something. Empty string equals, this is the if and then statement. If len empty string is greater than zero, run this block. We print something else is that string must have been empty. We can check that the user string actually has characters. Uh, write an if statement that verifies that the string has characters. Original is greater than zero. Don't forget the whatever at the end of the if statement has some characters in it. Print the user's word. Otherwise, else statement print this. You'll want to run your code multiple testing an empty string and a string of characters. When your con your code works when you do the next exercise. Okay, so we're just doing um, wait underscore. I think we're just printing this equals. if when original um, is greater than zero if it's this print Um, print original wait original wait wait let's see if this is a turn it we're turning into a string from variable str of original i believe i think that's how you do it no wait Let's see if this works. I'm learning here, you guys, so give me a break. Um, then else is is um, what does it want us to do if it's else? print empty yeah no that's not gonna work um string of original let's see if that works Line seven. Equals. Original. Run. 
run. Still not right. Let's see if this. Original print. Oh, okay. So you can just put it there as that. Okay. That's fine. I didn't think that would work. I completely forgot about that. Okay, next one. Check yourself some more. Now we have to have an empty string. Let's be even more though and check that our string only contains letters. Consider the following code. Is alpha. I don't get that. Uh, in the first line, we create a string with letters and numbers. Second line then runs the method dot this whatever this thing is, which returns false since the string contains non letter characters. It, you can use this to check that the string doesn't contain any non letter characters. For example, whatever. Use and to add a second condition to your if. statement in addition to your existing check that the string contains characters you should also use dot alpha to make sure that it only contains letters um, and and what Okay, wait, do we so we just do uh, dot I alpha I alpha parentheses? Is that how we do it? I guess. Um don't forget to keep the colon at the end of the if statement. Yes. Okay, I don't understand what's wrong with that because they aren't telling me what's wrong with that. Original, okay, that's, so you add this to the um, code, that's what happens. You add it to the uh, variable here. That's how you get to, that's why, that's how you check if it has only letters or something like that, if it has no numbers in it. Uh, pun two. See, that's how it goes. Okay, next. Pop quiz, and you finish one part of your program is important to test it multiple times using a variety of inputs. Take some time to test your code. Try some inputs that should pass and some that should fail. Enter some strings that contain non-alphabetical letters and an empty string. When you convince your code is ready to go, click the next, okay, run. So first, let's go with the regular word, like, um, fun. It worked. Now let's run it again. Let's do like 789 empty. Let's run it again. Let's do a uh, funny uh, 7. It's empty again. Let's run it again. And then let's do this last one with like special letters. It's empty again. So that's how you do that. Now we can get ready to start translating to Ping Latin. Let's review the rules for translation. You move the first letter of the word to the end and then append the suffix a, example, python, whatever. Let's create a variable to hold our translation suffix. Create a variable called pyg and set it equal to the a suffix. That's what they want to do. Next. Let's simplify things by making the letters in our word lowercase. Hello. String hello. The string equals the string dot lower. Yeah, you remember the lower and the upper and stuff. Lower function. Uh, I don't know if it's the string itself. So the lower is the lowercase version. An example above. Whatever. Grab the first letter of the word. We also need to grab the first letter. 
first letter is zero. Remember, it always starts with zero instead of one. It always starts with zero. Uh, it started zero. That's what it's saying. Instead, inside our if statement, create a, var a new variable called word that um, holds the dot lower case conversion of original. Create a new variable called first that holds word zero, the first letter of word. Okay. So it wants us to make a new variable called enter. Do we put that like right here? Let me just put it here and let's see if it works. But let's do like word equals original dot lower and whatever I think that's it and then uh, create a variable called first that holds the word zero um, let's see if it can go right here so first equals um, word word brackets oh wait that's wrong kind of brackets okay those and it's zero word zero Okay, so let's see if it works there. Let's do it like let's copy and paste this right here so we don't screw with the coding right here. Run. Uh, enter a word. Um, funny. Enter. Uh -huh. let's do this differently and then let's do a print because this is why it's d weird word funny that's why it's that's why it's kind of weird it's because we're not having the print word specifically because they changed variables from original and this one just wants to print original um move it on back now that we have the first letter scored stored we need to add both the letter and the string and the PYG to the end of another string remember how to concatenate whatever add strings together yeah yeah okay wait okay new line after where you created the first variable create a new variable called new underscore word new let me turn off caps lock underscore word equals word plus first plus PYG. Let's see if that works. Funny thing. Okay, apparently it works. Since we still don't have the, uh, okay. Yep, yep. Ending up. Well done. However, now we have the first letter showing up both at the beginning and near the end.
first we create a variable s and give it the string charlie next we access the first letter of charlie using at zero remember the lower okay and we access the slice charlie using s one to four this returns everything from the letter at position one up till position four okay slice the string just like in the third example above okay set new word equal to the slice at the first index all the way to the end of the new word okay so now we're doing um, new underscore word is equal to um, isn't it new word is equal to So, what do we do? Something like this: one colon colon len parentheses new word new underscore word. Okay, run. Okay, apparently that's wrong. Let's just get rid of this space here and see if that works. Okay, that's still wrong. Let's see. Okay, they fixed what mine was. My early ones, apparently. Lower first. Okay, we got rid of the print. That's what it was all about. They didn't really care about the print. Um. New word, new word. Okay, this is how you do it. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay, it's just because I didn't put the new word command there. Let's just do like uh, Finland. Okay, it didn't do anything. Right. Can't really do anything about that. Uh. Okay, so next thing. Testing, testing, is this thing on? Yay, you should have a fu fully functioning Piglet and translator. Test your code thoroughly to be sure everything is working smoothly. You also want to take out any print statements. You're having to help debug and many steps of your code. That's why they had it to be taken out. Making sure your code is clean, commented, and fully functional is just as important as writing in the first place. When you're sure your translate is working just the way you want it, click run code to finish the project. And see, this is where you put print a uh, new underscore word. See, that's why. Run. Uh, um, Antarctica. I hope that's how you spell it. That should, that's it. Okay, that's it. A. Why do I feel like this is one of the dumbest games I've ever seen before? I've never heard of the pig. Pig Latin. Sorry, guys. I've never heard of it. So it's kind of one of the stupidest things I've ever heard of. Up next. Okay. Next is the area calculator. Okay. It's time to build fluency in Python fundamentals. And this is just another calculator thing. Let's uh, see. We might be doing this next episode. Yep, we're doing this next episode, guys. Sorry, that's just way too long for amount of time I want my videos to be okay so see you guys later bye next time we're gonna be doing the area calculator thing so see you next time you guys bye